welcome to um, the um, sixth part, which is uh, Axle Peg. Thank you for being guests during my video. I really appreciate that. Um, maybe I'll call you guys fans. You guys are all fans in my video. Um, let's make a quick appearance. You guys are now um, um, in my video. Uh, thank you for, for appearing in my video. All right, awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the axle peg. So as we have done with every one of these parts, it's really, really important <clears throat> that we um, make sure our assembly is activated with this radio button up here. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to hit new component. Um, go ahead and stop me, guys, and ask questions at any point. Um, feel free. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to name this axle peg. If I could spell it right. There we go. Axle peg. Um, everything else will gray out. Now, um, for this part, I could build it in the actual hole where the wheel is. Um, but I think just to make it easier to see while we're working, um, I'm going to build it off to the side somewhere. And again, not a big deal. You can do it either way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a sketch. Um, I'm just going to pick any plane out here, capture position, and um, I'm just going to build it off to the side, if that's okay with all of you. All right, so I'm looking at my drawing right now, and... Um, I'm going to decide that I'm going to I'm going to make this using revolve. Revolve is where we wrap a profile around an axis. Okay. So for the axle peg, um, I'm going to start by drawing the shape of this axle peg um, without adding really any dimensions to it. Um, and I think that might be a good place for everyone here to start too. Um, maybe start with the, um, the middle line, which represents um, the center of the, we'll call this a bolt, but this, this line represents the center of the bolt. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, now, I think it's, it's, it's hard for some people to visualize what I'm doing right now um, until I actually revolve it. So what I'm going to do is without... Um, explaining what I'm doing, I'm going to draw a profile and I'm going to revolve it and I'm going to come back to what I'm doing. So I'm drawing an arc right now. Let's see here. So this is um, literally a straight line down, a straight line over, a straight line up, a straight line over, and a straight line up. And then I have just a little arc. A little three-point arc. Uh, let me show you how I drew that three-point arc. Um, I went to create arc, and I went first point of the arc. Then the end of the arc is at the top that's horizontal to this. See how I hovered and allowed those dashed lines to, to slide over? And then the third click establishes the radius. And I want that radius to be somewhere around here. I'm going to press escape on my keyboard and I'm going to draw my final horizontal line just like that. So this is the shape that I want to create. All right. Um, you know, bringing the picture over of the, of, the, uh, um, of the bolt or the axle peg, you can see what this looks like in the picture. Um, why did I just draw that shape? Um, I'm going to show you why. When I finish my sketch, when I click on Revolve, um, if and when I um, pick the region and I select my middle axis, take a look at what that shape looks like. It looks like that bolt, kind of. Kind of. I say kind of because I have not added any dimensions. It's not the correct size. But you can see that it's got the flat edge it's got the shaft where the threads are going to go, and it's got that flat spot up top. So hopefully um, you can kind of see how Revolve works by only drawing a quarter of it and then wrapping it around the axis. So I'm going to stop at this point, hit cancel, and I'm going to go down to my sketch, and I'm going to open it up again. And now I'm going to add 
all of my dimensions, okay? So now I'm looking at my print again, and I can see that it is a quarter 20 UNC bolt. So that means that the shaft, which is down here, is a quarter inch in diameter. If that's true, then I need to, di I, I need to make the diameter of the bolt, which is down here, a quarter of an inch, 0.25. But, listen carefully, don't press enter. Since this is going to wrap around the axis, it's going to double in size. So I have to divide it by 2. So actually, it should be half of that. Because it's going to end up doubling in size after I revolve it. All right? So let's look at the next dimension, which is from the center to this outside part right here. Now, if I look at my print, you'll notice I have a diameter of 0.422. I'm going to type that in. Diameter of 0.422. Um, that's a diameter again, so I better divide by 2. Notice how everything that I am dimensioning from the center line to the outer edge, I am having to divide by 2. That's okay. It's kind of squeezing my geometry and making it not look as nice as it did before. So I might have to come in and just drag some of my geometry um, back into shape a little bit, uh, make me feel a little better about my original geometry, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to work on my overall height now a little bit. Um, when I look at my, um, my drawing, oops, um, I'm going to look at the overall height of the head of the bolt, which looks like, I'm going to zoom in, is 0.125. So overall height of the head is 0.125. Now notice, I don't have to um, divide that by 2 because I'm not revolving in this direction. I'm only a revolving around the, um, the axis, not in the vertical direction. And also notice how when I added that dimension, it kind of jacked up that line a little bit. So I'm going to press escape and I'm going to grab that endpoint and just drag it back this way. There we go. Now I'm going to look at my print and I notice that the height of this edge, uh, oops, let me redimension that. That little um, vertical line right there, if I look closely, it tells me it's 0 0.031 inches tall. Okay, and look at that. It, it did the same thing to me again, so i got to move that back out again. Uh, that's really annoying. I'm going to go ahead and dimension the width of from here to here. How wide should that be? Well, if I look, um, it's telling me that the, the diameter of the flat which is going to be this little flat round spot that, that will be created once I revolve it, um, should be 0.25. Well, I better divide that by 2 since it's going to be revolved. And remember, anything that um, goes from the center to the outside edge needs to be divided by 2. Now, lastly, I have a spherical radius of 0.236. So that's this little arc right there. That should be a spherical radius of 0.236. So I'm, I'm already dimensioning it um, as a radius, so 0.236. And then there you go. Now I've got a nice little arc. So everything up here is done. Now all I got to do is specify the length of this bolt. All right. Um, if I look at my drawing, it says it's a quarter 20 UNC times one, which means that the length of the bolt is one inch. So I'm going to click from here to there, and I want to say that this bolt should be one inch tall. So there we go. Now we have all of the dimensions in here. We're going to finish our sketch. We're going to revolve it, pick the profile, pick the axis, and there we go. We now have our revolved axle peg. But it is not done yet. All we have is the shape. We don't have the hex, hex 
um, hole on top and we don't have the threads and we don't have the um, chamfer on the end, which is the 45 degree cut. So let's go ahead and let's take care of that. First, let's do the, oh, I don't know, let's do the hex, the hex hole. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a sketch on the top surface of this little round um, flat spot. Um, and then what we're going to do is, this is actually easier than it seems. Some people will actually try to create a hex shape with lines. If you try to do that, you're crazy. That's really hard to do. Don't do that. Undo. I got a better way. Go to create and pick polygon. I don't care if it's circumscribed or inscribed. Just pick one of them. Um, snap to the center of your geometry and drag it out and click. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I did that very quick. Undo. Do that one more time. Um, you can pick how many sides it has. So do that one more time. Um, do you see the number six on my screen? This is a hexagon, so six is correct. But if you didn't want six, you could put an eight, nine, ten, eleven, however many sides you want. But hex, the word hex means six, so this is correct. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just place it, and then it says 530 seconds across the flats. So across the flats, dimension it, across the flats. 530 seconds. 5 divided by 32. It's a fraction. All done. Finish sketch. We're going to cut it. Use extrude. Pick it. Drag down, and it says 0.111D. Got to cut it, though. So, oh, that's I'm sorry, negative 0.111. There we go. So that's done. Um, now we want to add the chamfer, which is the 45 degree uh, cut on the end. Um, so we go up to modify. There's a word right there. It says chamfer. And if you look at the drawing, it says a 45 degree chamfer, um, 0.03 deep. So just do this. Click on the end that you want the chamfer and specify the distance, 0 0.03. That was easy. Say OK. And now here's the last part. Now guys, little secret, I haven't done cylindrical threads in Fusion yet. I've done it in Inventor a million times. This is my first time and I'm on video. So how embarrassing will that be if I don't do it right? Very embarrassing. But that's OK. I don't mind being embarrassed. So bear with me in case this doesn't work. I think it's under create. Yep, it is. You go to thread. Okay. So far, so good, guys. Then we're going to go to um, the, the actual pick the, pick the cylinder. Nice. Oh, look at that. It even, it even knows what size thread because it can sense the fact that the, the cylinder is 0.25. So it already knows it should be a quarter 20 thread. All right, that's nice. Um, it should not be a full-length thread. Look at this. It's, it's drawing the thread all the way up to the neck. I don't want that. So uncheck full. Do you see how it, now it's only going up partially? Um, for the length, you want it to go, um, it should tell us. Oh, it says quarter-inch offset in the thread designation. So you want it to go up 0.75. There we go. <laughs> we did it. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit, oops, I moved the wrong screen. Sorry. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit, okay. We're done. Hit save. I love it when things work the first time, which is very rarely. Okay, so now we got our threads. Now we're going to go back to miniature train, activate it. Now it's just a simple joint. Um, let's drop this in. Assemble, joint, motion, revolute, right? This is the same as all the other parts we've been doing. Position, pick the, uh, let me spin this around a little bit. 
All right, so we want that to go there. Easy. And then if we want more pegs, right click, uh, copy, make sure the train is activated, right click, paste, move it, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. And then we can just keep putting them in, right? Right click, paste, move it, right click, paste, move it, and then it's just three more joints. All of them are revolutes. Got to be careful on the revolute that you're picking the right surface. Make sure you're picking that surface, the one right below the neck of the bolt. Good. Assemble joint. Oh, no. Assemble joint. there. Assemble joint. Flip. Oh no, look at this one, guys. If you ever have a problem like what I just did here, do you see this is backwards? Just open up your joints folder. You can right click on this joint, edit the joint, and flip it, all fixed. And that concludes my video number six.